Hi YouTube, Danielle here. Just wanted to share a little bit, a little bit more about my experience here in Montana. So I've lived here for 10 years, so obviously I've liked something about it. But I also wanted to share about some things that have been hard. So um, I've met quite a few black women here and I've become friends with a number of black women. And it's interesting because each person has such a unique experience. Um, I think, like, I've never had someone call me the N-word when I'm, like, walking down the street or do anything to my house um, because of my race, you know, per se. I, one time my car was egged, and I called the police, and I was like, yeah, my car was egged, and I don't know if, it, you know, I'm a person of color. I don't know if maybe that's why. And um, the person I was talking to, she was like, She's like, I don't want to dis discount that, but I know that in that area, there have been more um, cars getting egged right now. And she's like, I think they're just like, you know, idle teenagers who are making poor choices. Um, and so I was like, okay, you know, and, and it never happened again. And my roommates helped me clean my car, which was nice. Um, but I think the thing that I've experienced the most uh, in a hurtful way has been people, you know, not making eye contact with me. Um, Missoula tends to be a very friendly place. A lot of people, you know, if you're walking down the street, people will say hi, people will probably talk to you in the grocery store. But, um, but yeah, you know, or, or say hi on a hike um, or when you're out recreating. And um, I think the most um, hurtful things have been like more passive, um, ig ignorances, if that's the word, I don't know, but people ignoring me on trails and then saying hi to the people before or after me. I remember going to, um, different parties pre-COVID and, uh, people not shaking my hand, uh, just coming up with weird, you know, things like putting their hands in their pockets right when they meet me and I'm like, oh yeah, nice to meet you. And, and then I'd see them later, like meet somebody for the first time and shake their hand, you know, uh, another person, you know, that, uh, was white. And, and then, um, I remember going to, uh, coworkers, um, housewarming party and her neighbor also did that. And my name, my coworker was kind of shocked, you know, because, uh, she was more obvious about not wanting to shake my hand. And just like was kind of a jerk, but I was like, well, you know, I know other people at this party. I don't need to, you know, give my energy to this person. Like I'm still going to have a good time, you know, but I definitely feel some insecurity when I go to small towns and because I like hiking, you know, like there's hiking all over Montana, but I definitely go to t small towns at times and I never quite know how I'm going to be received. So I got married in June, uh, and my husband and I were going to go um, up to a pretty remote northern part of Montana that's pretty close to Idaho. And some of our really good friends, multiple friends, one friend who grew up in that near that area and another friend who's heard about, a lot about the area, just were suggesting that we not uh, not go there just because there's not there isn't any reception. And they're like, we're not really sure how you'll be received up there. Um, so we ended up changing our honeymoon plans and went to an area that wasn't, it was still in that similar vicinity, I think even within like 25 miles of it, but it just a little closer to a bigger town. And just, we had a really great experience there. Um, and it was still small town Montana, but you know, everyone was really welcoming. At one point I got a little insecure about, we were gonna um, get some food, you know, to make it the Airbnb and I didn't wanna go in the grocery store and I don't usually have that response. I'm usually just like, okay, we'll just see how it goes, you know, and I might pray about it. I just pray for strength or courage or, you know, what have you. And we, uh, my husband's like, oh, you know, like, are you sure you don't want to come in? And and he, he did encourage me. Um, so we went in together. And then as soon as we go in, you know, we're going to the deli. And this guy's like, I'm sorry, I just have to say something. He's like, you have the most beautiful skin I just, yeah, I was like looking at you and I was just like, wow, which was not what I was expecting. 
And so, I don't know, I think every once in a while I'll go to, to small towns and have these like pleasant surprises where I'll meet somebody that's just really kind to me. And it's like, generally, I'm like the only person <laughs> in a store at that time, black person in, in, in the store. Or, you know, I might be the only black person at an event um, or a work party or another get together. And I just think I've been pretty impressed with um, how many people will go out of their way to make me feel included and will be kind. And sometimes it's like a little awkward, but it's it's really neat to see like, you know, um, the kindness I've been able to experience over the years. I remember one time one of my coworkers was doing a benefit for her granddaughter. And so I wanted to, you know, I brought some friends and went to support. Um, one of my other friends was black and my roommate at the time was Mexican. So we go into this bar, everyone else is white. We walk in and heads just turn and look at us. And it's just like this awkwardness. And I see some coworkers there. No one comes up and says hi. Until one of my coworkers, he comes up, comes over and he's like, you know, greets me. And he's like, hey, you know, like, yeah, let me show you where the food is. Let me show you where the table is and la la la. And so it was just interesting, you know, just um, having that experience. And that was, you know, in Missoula. So it's not like I was in small town Montana or anything like that. But it just, there's like these pockets um, where like I just feel really out of place, really unwelcome. But then I feel like I always catch at least one person who wants to go out of their way to be welcoming, hospitable, kind, and it just goes such a long way. Um, yeah, so, you know, I think there's a lot of experiences that black people or people of color, you know, have or, you know, people with, um, like, you know, different sexual orientations um, or, you know, even people who are disabled. I think there's a lot of people who are quote unquote other that just unfortunately just have these really different experiences. Um, yeah. So, um, but I think one thing that really helped me was something a friend told me when I first moved here and she was like, Oh, do you think you'd be treated better if you were white? And I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> and she was like, okay, well you're not. So, um, she's like, you know, if you look for the people who don't want you here, you'll always find them. But if you look for the people who do want you here, you'll also find them. And I think that's been something that I've really held on to. It's like, I can look around and I can, you know, see the glares and, you know, the unkindness in people's eyes if I'm looking for it. But then if I'm also looking for a smile or if I'm like looking to make a connection, I can generally find that too. And so I... Yeah, like I've felt safe living here in Montana. I know some people have shared experiences with me that have been really alarming. Um, I know one gal, her daughter lived in a remote, um, a, more, a smaller town, and she just had a horrible experience there. It was just treated really poorly. Her daughter never made friends. It was really sad. And then, you know, I have a friend who I met now I think eight years ago and she's you know going to the university has had a, a pretty good experience living here and then I, I've met you know multiple black women who have lived here for maybe one or two years and have just said it's just too too difficult and have moved other places so um, I think really coming out here it's knowing that okay you're, you're definitely gonna stand out um, but I think there, you'll also, you'll find kindness because I think there really is kindness everywhere, but you'll, you'll probably also meet those people who aren't as welcoming or are a little bit more exclusive for sure. Um, so I guess you just, you know, could try it and <laughs> just see, see how you like it. I think living, I think the lifestyle is something I really love, you know, being closer to the mountains, um, being able to commute, like this week I walk to work. Um, I, I can obviously bike if I'm walking, um, but it's just nice to not have to drive everywhere. You know, I carpool with my husband or with friends, different places, and it's just been really, it's been a really great experience. Um, my church brought me here originally, but it's been neat to see how the church as well as the community I've built here 
has kept me here. And one thing, um, so, and it's like not to be political, but when Trump got elected and, you know, people were just, I don't know, making really insensitive comments um, about racial matters, I was just starting to feel unsafe. And I called this um, a distress hotline and was talking to a counselor about it. I was just like, yeah, I just feel really unsure and he's like you know you live and he just encouraged me he's like you've lived here for this amount of time you've been safe so just hold on to that too you know like hold on to how your community has treated you which was really a really helpful truth but something that I just treasured was one of my really good friends um who I met through working out and through my workout community she um you know, just asked if I want to go on a hike. We went on a hike and, you know, just telling her how I was feeling and what I was thinking. And she was just like, yeah, she was like, I'm here, you know, like I'm here to support you. And I think that group of friends in particular that I've met through working out has been, they've been a godsend just in being safe people that I can just really honestly talk about anything with. They're like, yeah, we can come on mountaintops and just scream at the top of our lungs, you know, about the frustrations that we go through in life and, unjust situations you know and it's it's really it's a really special community here um i i will say uh it can be hard to get into community people are very nice but sometimes it's a little harder to like build a connection that's going to continue so i think something that's helped me and i think has helped people who have stayed here if you you know aren't married or are in a relationship is like getting, being a part of different community events. There's Missoula events and there's, you know, opportunities to connect with people, whether it's, you know, going dancing or getting into a recreation with other folks in town. Um, and then, you know, building a workout community. Like there's some workout groups that, um, like I go to the Lifelong Learning Center. I don't really go to a gym anymore, even though I've tried out different gyms. And at each gym, I felt like I built a small community, but um, I wasn't as involved in their lives. It was more just like, oh, hi, and, you know, catching up, saying, you know, talk, small talk about the week type of thing, which I, I still enjoyed. But when I went to the Lifelong Learning Center, um, I hung out with, you know, my workout buddies outside of uh, working out there. You know, we would exchange gifts. Uh, we did the Secret Santa uh, gift exchanges and... I um, invited, you know, some of the gals to my wedding, which was small, you know, due to COVID. But um, yeah, I definitely think um, trying to get into a, a group is helpful, especially in the spring and summer when everybody's out and about doing things. And even the fall, but in the winter, I feel like, you know, when things get cold and it's a little dreary outside and everything's covered in snow, it's just easier for people to also hibernate. And so it's harder to make those connections unless you're willing to like go out, you know, every Saturday or every weekend to different events. Um, or even like a lot of people meet at the bar too. I'm not really like a bar goer. Um, so I was just like looking for other opportunities to connect with people. But um, thankfully I found it, found them, you know, with meeting people through working out. And then um, I... I'm not uh, like I'm not a runner, but there's a really big running community here. I'm not. I'm also not a cyclist. Like I like you know the occasional jog. I like the leisure bike rides, you know, here and there. But there's some significant communities that you can jump into, and there's people that play volleyball and they meet up at like certain parks to play every weekend. I know some people met um, like you know future significant others and friends you know, build friend groups through that. And there's book clubs in town. So there's a lot to do, but I think it's a little easier to make friends when the sun's out. Uh, and I think there's also like a visible vibe change when the sun's out. So when it's kind of like gloomy and rainy or snowy or what have you, unless you're up, you know, skiing or snowboarding or something like that, like people tend to be like a little bit more, you know, reserved or to themselves. And then like once the spring comes and the sun's out, like 
you can just see the city come back to life. Like flowers are hanging downtown, you know, people have their, their, all their, you know, gardens started and yeah, like there's definitely like a buzz in the air, like the energy's back. So it's, um, it's a more opportune time to, to make those connections. Not to say that you can't make, can't make connections in this winter. You definitely can. Um, cause there's a lot of people that ski, snowboard, there's a cross country skiing, um, community. I haven't gone, I haven't become a part of that, but, um, I do, you know, enjoy cross country skiing sometimes and snowshoeing and things like that. But, and there's a lot of churches here too. So that's also, um, a place to make connection. I've made a lot of really good friendships through church and then, um, in turn, and also through volunteering, that was another thing I met people through, or like met and maintained relationships um, through church or meeting mutual friends uh, through volunteer events or what have you. So, yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, yeah, it's pretty neat. And then also, you can also hang out with like people you meet at work, obviously, but um, just, you know, some ideas for out of work, um, friendships and, uh, and then nowadays it seems like people, you know, turn to apps to connect, make, make connections with people. I know my friend's son recently, uh, made a connection and, uh, started dating a gal on there, but you know, at first they were just friends, which was really neat. So yeah, Missoula is definitely a cool place. Um, I think one last thing I'll share is, uh, about my experience with the police. And again, I can't speak for everybody, but I know I've been pulled over, huh? I've had the most like parking tickets. So one thing I will say is if you park on campus, just buy a pass because it's like things will always take longer than you expect them to take. But, um, I remember <laughs> I got a parking, um, ticket downtown and one nice thing, I don't know if they do it anymore, but one thing they used to do is they used to give you a forgiveness uh, ticket. So you get one forgiveness ticket, I think a year. And then after that, I think it's five bucks. But on the university, I think it's like a $20, $20 ticket. So obviously worth the $1 or $2 ticket to stay there for an hour. So you don't have to pay $20 to park for an hour um, or a little over. So yeah, so I was on my way to a friend's house. I was gonna braid her daughter's hair and I got pulled over by this guy. And I don't remember what was going on. I don't know if my light was out or... Oh, oh, I was not driving hands-free. Unfortunately, that was, yeah. I think I like, I moved my phone or something. I did something. So he noticed that I touched it and I was like, Oh my gosh. He's like, yeah, if you had it in this like little compartment, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be an issue. But he's like, yeah, you definitely, you just, you can't even touch your phone while you're in motion. I was like, thank you for that. But it was a really positive experience. Um, he was really friendly, really respectful. And then just gave me a warning. He's like, yeah, just, you know, make better choices. <laughs> I was like, will do. Thank you. Um, and then I just like went on my way. And then... Um, I, oh yeah, I was driving back from, I think Yellowstone with a couple friends and, uh, this is my friend Jojo. She's also, she's Haitian and my friend Cole and he's white. And so we get pulled over, Cole's driving and the police officer is just like, oh, you know, like, did you realize you were speeding? And he's like, I didn't. And I think he also passed in a non, in a non-passing lane um, or part of the road. And so the police officer, you know, it was like just talking to us. My friend ended up showing him pictures. Like, Oh, do you want to see pictures from our trip? And I think I was, I was like feeling a little apprehensive when we were getting pulled over, but then she's just like casual. And she's like, Oh yeah, let me show you pictures. She's like, you have to take your, do you have a family? Do you have kids? You need to take them to where we went and Yellowstone and just having this conversation with him. And I think it was a really neat, it was neat to be a part of that experience and just see, you know, police officers are people too. You know, like the, there are some people who, you know, obviously let their personal feelings um, get in the way of them making responsible choices, like or let their discrimination or maybe a power 
complex get in the way of different things, but I, I just think that's not the whole of every police officer, you know what I mean? And at times, like, I want to, um, like, just go to the police station and say, like, hey, you know, thank you for, like, trying to not discriminate, you know what I mean? Like, one of my uh, friend's husbands just became a police officer, and it's like, I know him, and he has black friends, and he, you know, is a great guy, um, and isn't racist, and grew up in Montana, you know what I mean? And and I think living here has helped me realize that I need to be careful about my judgments in the same way that I want people to be careful about their judgments of me. Like I need to be careful of my judgments of them. And when I was looking, um, at a video about Wilcox, Mary Wilcox and, uh, and Helena, I think it was a skit with, um, like, you know it. Uh, Trevor Noah and so he had his guy go out and do some interviews in Helena and when he was at the bar and asking people like oh so you voted for Trump but you also voted for Wilcox like what that doesn't make sense but I think that is something I also had to realize just because some of my coworkers, some of my friends you know some people in the community voted for Trump didn't or I saw people around town wearing you know Trump hats like, I couldn't put these judgments on them. They're like, oh, you're racist, and you're a misogynist, and you're this, 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 And it's like, I don't know you. I don't know why you chose to vote for this person. I don't I don't know why you might have voted for someone else. I don't, you know, it's like, I just, I, I think something I realized out of that experience was that I couldn't um, be judgmental. And I needed to give people a chance. And I actually... I've been really impressed, you know, just by people connecting with people based off of their character, not just because they are part of the same party or part of the same, you know, belief system or part of the same socioeconomic group or status. And and I think that's something I've really been impressed with living here. Um, another thing, sorry, one more thing, is the materialism. So I moved here from California. And I think that was one thing I really...